we go. So to go back to history, we're going to ask this question how it was supposed to be. And George Washington these days is a little bit like that image of the, the lady and the duck, you know, that they use for sort of eyesight testing. Like, is it a lady or is it a duck? Okay, well, this one is, is he a hero or is he a slave owner? Because people see George Washington in two completely different ways. Nonetheless, he's an anchor figure for thinking about the beginning of the country. So how was it supposed to be in the beginning? For me, the single best way of capturing what the project of democratic citizenship is, is summed up in the second sentence of the Declaration of Independence. So let me just remind you what's in that sentence. Okay? Some of you may know, and I think some of you have been reading about the Declaration recently, so this won't be news to you, but we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people alter or to abolish it and institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to effect their safety and happiness. How many of you remember the sentence was that long? <laughs> Read every year. <laughs> Most people think it's not that aptitude of happiness. That's incorrect. This is a full sentence. And it's important because what it is is it's a theory of revolution. It's a philosophical argument with premises and conclusion. The first premise is people have rights. Here are some examples. Right? Among these, it's not a complete list, just some examples. So that means you get to figure out what else goes on the list. So among these are likely to be to happiness. So premise one, people have rights. Premise two, we build governments to secure those rights. Conclusion, governments aren't doing what they're supposed to do, securing rights, it's our job to diagnose that, to make the change. And the most important part of the sentence, from my point of view, the thing that I think sums up the work of democratic citizenship, and from my point of view, is the meaning of America, and should be what we collectively share, is the recognition that this is our job. That's the right of the people, when things aren't working, to alter and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its power in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. So the job is to figure out how to walk from a picture of my pursuit of happiness to a picture of our safety and happiness. The only way we can do that is through shared discussions around our principles, find our way to shared values of some kind, to figure out how to connect the powers of government, namely policies and structure of institutions, to those principles so that we can make our principles real. But if this is the work of democracy, diagnosing our circumstances so as to tell whether or not government is securing our rights, and coming up prescribing solutions to them, if this is our job, the only way we can do it is if we do it together. So this question of what the meaning of America is is pretty fundamental. Because we actually have to have some view about what it is we do together and how we do it together in order to do it at all. In other words, what I'm suggesting is that the future of democracy, the sustainability of democracy, depends on there being some shared conception of the work we do together. And that's where the basic meaning of America has to lie. 